Well, good evening. Uh, Mayor Stan Kochi here, along with City Manager Mike Mellis. Uh, thank you for being here with us. And for those of you tuning in to see a, a regular council meeting tonight, this is it. <laughs> uh, obviously, due to the coronavirus and uh, the fact that we have no uh, council business where we have to vote on anything tonight, and through a unanimous consensus of city council, we have suspended tonight's meeting. Uh, but Mike and I will be here for a few minutes to uh, give you some information, let you know what's happening around our town, and uh, again, thanks for being here. Also on April 20th, we will have a virtual council meeting where we will all uh, be in our homes and safe uh, confines and we will conduct our meeting over uh, Zoom and uh, it's all in accordance with the Ohio Attorney General's uh, ruling on how to handle those type of me meetings so it will be open. Uh, we will have uh, ability to do feedback for uh, citizen comments as we normally do at the end of each meeting. So it will uh, comply with state rules on uh, uh, running meetings. But tonight we want to just give you some information. And uh, but before I get into that, I, I just want to commend our city manager, Mike Malice, Fire Chief Dave Nagy, and Deputy Police Chief Rick Sutz for their strong and decisive leadership during this, this uh, crisis. They've been on top of things from the very beginning, going back to February. They have made quick, definitive decisions for the welfare and protection of our citizens and city employees. Safety of all being the primary concern. I cannot say enough about the quality, compassion, and concern that these three men have exhibited and are continuing every day to manage What's best for all of us? Gentlemen, thank you. Uh, I can't say it enough. You guys are doing a fantastic job. And I want to give a, a huge thanks to all of our city employees who are doing their best in, this, in the face of this adversity. Please know that the city is operating near as normal with limited face-to-face -face contact with each other and the public. If you must meet with City Hall personnel, you must have an appointment. So please just call in for that. And you see our service department guys, they're on the street doing their work. Our office and clerical workers are doing their daily tasks. Some in the office, some at home. 911 is operating. You call for police, fire, EMS. They're going to respond. And uh, all of our city departments are available by phone. And Mike will fill you in on some specifics of what's happening in the city in just a, just a few moments. A couple of points I want to make. Uh, uh, first, one is voting. Voting this primary is by uh, mail-in ballot only. Call the Board of Elections at 216-443-8688. Eight, three to request a primary ballot or go online to the board boe.cuyahogacounty.us to download an application and mail it in so they can send you out your appropriate ballot. And also the census is still going on. By law you must fill out your census form. An accurate census helps ensure fair representation at all level, levels of government. It directly impacts the funding of our city and schools and what they will receive over the next decade. And the census provides the most reliable and complete date, data for research, decision making and planning for both the public and private sectors. Be sure to count all who are living or staying at your house, apartment, condo, wherever on April 1st. Uh, 
One group is often missed in the census is children under the age of five. I'm not sure why, but they need to be counted. Because after all, uh, they will be school-aged ch children by the, the time the next census comes in 10 years. Please, do not shortchange them uh, by not counting them in. And all information is confidential and no specific personal information is available to anyone. Uh, they can hand, the Census Bureau can hand out general information as types of groups, whatever, but they cannot give specific information. So it is all protected. It is the most highly uh, protected system in the United States government. And please note, our metro parks are open for walking or riding your bikes. Just enjoy the afternoon. Uh, what are closed is the gathering spots, playgrounds and attractions like our Viaduct Park. City playgrounds are closed. It would be almost impossible to sanitize them and keep kids six feet apart. The parks are closed because too many people are not taking this virus seriously. If you're going to one of the parks, or even to walk around, if you see a full parking lot, maybe think uh, about going somewhere else. Please use some common sense so we can all be safe. And just a reminder that chipper service has begun this week, but you must call the service department to get on the chipper list by Friday, the week before chipper service begins for the month. And also, if you need other assistance, you can call the United Way at 211 for a wide variety of helpful services. And please, if you can, volunteer to help at one of our local food banks or Meals on Wheels. They are in desperate need of some able bodies to deliver food to the people in need. Uh, just, just contact Meals on Wheels, food bank. Uh, if you need, call City Hall. We can connect you with some uh, phone numbers. <coughs> and uh, Councilwoman Spinks has come up with an idea to help bring us together. I think it's a great idea. She is asking her ward and challenging her fel fellow council persons to let their words know that this Saturday night at 8 o'clock, weather permitting, that all of us go out into your driveways with flashlights, glow sticks, lanterns, or other illuminating devices. No lasers, we don't want anybody getting blind. And light up the night and show our neighbors we are okay. We'll get through this crisis together and be stronger for it when it's over. And if you want to sing or play an instrument, do it. Uh, I know one instance, a uh, young lady was playing uh, uh, a musical instrument and a neighbor came out and sat on the grass away from her and she was in tears saying it just made her day to hear that somebody else was out there with her. So that I think it would be a great fun to go out and do that and a great release for all of us and um, if you're in an apartment go out into the parking area you know, watch for cars obviously spread out and join in some fellowship and support us and support for all of us it should be fun for everyone and with that I want to turn it over to our city manager Mike Ballas to give you some specifics on some programs and things that are happening around town and we will be able to take a few questions at the end, and Mike will give you that uh, contact in, in a minute. So, Mike. Thank you, Mayor, and good evening to all of you at home. This is obviously a, a unique situation for all of us. Um, I do hope this message finds each and every one of you and your families healthy and safe. Like everyone and, and all of you and everyone else around the world, uh, we and, and our team and City Council and Mayor Kochi and myself uh, have been actively monitoring this situation since mid-February. Um, obviously, it has forced us to make some tough decisions, but I believe, um, as we all do, they were the decisions that were right for um, our primary focus, and that's the health, safety, and well-being of all of our community, residents, business owners, as well as our staff. Like each and every one of you, we are also adapting to what we, we are referring to as our new norm. Um, it's a change. 
It's a change in how we conduct our business. It's a change in our lifestyles for all of us. Um, I can tell you though, with some of those changes that we implemented uh, a few weeks back, a closure of buildings, cancellation of some of our events, um, as well as um, our day-to-day -day operations, it has not uh, changed the service that we are delivering. Um, our, our team and our staff are, are working harder than ever. And I wanna commend um, all of our employees, especially um, our department heads, um, who are actively working to continue to provide the services that each and every one of you um, deserve. Um, I can uh, definitely, uh, to note, all of our essential police, fire, uh, public service, all of those personnel and all of those critical city services remain our primary for focus and uh, are continue to be available. Um, if you noticed uh, last week, and I believe there were some uh, postings out today, um, our fire department, uh, we took uh, delivery of our new state-of-the-art squad that came from Horton. Um, I can't commend Chief Nagy enough, as well as his staff, um, Pat Goody, um, who saw this project through from the start. And we now have in service a state-of-the-art piece of equipment um, with all the safety um, pieces that are available should you need that. Um, it is a great piece of equipment and um, definitely going to be utilized. Um, as far as our police, our police are conducting our regular patrols and actually increased patrols. Um, we're going into our businesses to check on them, that the ones that do remain open and that are essential. Um, and you're going to see more of our officers patrolling the neighborhoods. Um, that's important. Um, look for, you know, as, our, as the weather turns, we're going to be um, rolling out the motorcycle unit again. We're going to be bringing out the bike patrol. Um, obviously, safety is a primary focus, and we're here in that need. If you need us, call, and that goes for anybody. I want to mention um, our service department, and I know the mayor talked about our chipper service. Call if you need that. It does start this week. Um, but we're doing a handful of other projects throughout town. Recently, our service director, Clint Beller, placed the order for our trees. You know, we still have another 50 plus trees from a grant we received last year. Those are gonna be planted um, this spring. So we are still conducting this day-to-day -day business uh, as usual. How we're delivering some of that, yes, it's changed. Um, but we're working very hard to continue that. Um, I do want to share some uh, exciting news. You know, our um, economic development uh, staff member, Jennifer Kuzma, um, has done a great job. We did recently receive uh, notification from the county that we received two grants. One grant is for another $50,000 that is going to cover the remaining balance of our sign initiative. And while I'll mention that sign initiative, um, a lot of the locations and prep work is currently being done. They've been inspected and the company is going to start installation in the immediate future. Um, that has been made possible through multiple grants through the county and I want to commend Jen for her efforts. Um, also, uh, Jen was made aware that the city was successful in another $150,000 grant um, that is going to allow us to conduct a sewer maintenance program. Um, we're going to identify certain areas of town televise those sewers and establish a plan for future repairs. So uh, again, congratulations to Jen, uh, congratulations to Clint Beller and Sean Francis at the service department. Um, well done on that work. We're gonna be starting that bidding process in the near future for that program. And we're also gonna be starting the bidding process for our annual road program. That road program where the city is planning on um, spending about $400,000 for um, street repairs as well as some sidewalk repairs. So that will be taking place. I also want to uh, commend Jen and, and the other members of our staff that worked with state officials as well as federal officials um, in Art of Beauty. If it, for those of you that don't know, Art of Beauty is a main makeup manufacturer. Um, obviously, it was preparing to um, closed due to uh, the stay-at-home order, um, they actually look to switch gears. And how can we help? How can we help, um, obviously, Northeast Ohio, but 
um, the city of Bedford, the Bedford UH Medical Center. And they had the ability to produce hand sanitizer. Well, there's steps that need to be taken. And you know, I'm proud to say that our staff have worked within a matter of four days. We're able to streamline that and acquire federal approval from the FDA. And last week, actually about a week and a half ago, uh, Art of Beauty began production of hand sanitizer right here in the city of Bedford. That sanitizer is being provided to the Bedford Medical UH or UH Bedford Medical Center, um, and it's going to be made available to our safety forces and other members uh, of the community. So, um, kudos to our staff and kudos to Art of Beauty for thinking outside the box. Again, I, I think this is a new norm for all of us, and uh, you know we're working very, very hard to continue to conduct business but also look at different ways of conducting that business. One of the other pieces that um, I'm extremely proud of um, that our staff has worked to deliver, if you haven't had a chance to visit our website, and we started this, um, we have a small working team that meets nearly every day, every morning, and we look at, you know, obviously the developments that are taking place, what new orders are coming out, and what changes do we need to make. At the very beginning, our staff kind of put our heads together and we felt, let's get as much information as possible. Let's just establish almost like a portal on our website. And if you haven't had a chance, visit our website. Um, they've done a tremendous job. And Mike Callahan and the staff at the Recreation Department really took that and ran with it. That portal includes resources for businesses that have been affected by this trash or by this crisis. Um, if there's direct links to the federal programs, the state programs, as far as um, resources if they were forced to close, resources that they can apply for for some of the funding that's been made available through the CARES Act. All of that information is on our website. You can also visit that website for residents. There's information on um, unemployment. There's a, a whole slew of information, copies of the stay at home order if you have questions about it. And probably the most exciting piece that's on there is putting, our, putting the staff's heads together. We created a request for assistance form. And you can go on there and you can type in what, what it is that you need. If it's you need help with food assistance, we will work with you to help deliver that food and provide that food. If you simply want a wellness check, if you know of a neighbor that would like a wellness check, enter it in that information. We will get it and we will conduct it. I can tell you our staff have been um, providing hundreds of calls each and every week as far as simple wellness checks to our seniors, wellness checks for some that are uh, maybe less fortunate, just to check in and see what they need. Um, it goes an extremely long way and the people are very appreciative of it and we will continue to do that. So please stay engaged with us. We're trying our best to continue to be engaged with you. Um, I stress for each and every one of you to sign up for our constant contact. Follow us on our Facebook page. Follow us on Twitter and visit that website. That website, especially that portal, is constantly updated and we'll continue to put as much information out there as possible. I think lastly, I just want to implore each and every one of you to follow those stay at home guidelines that the governor um, has issued. They're extremely important. And the sooner that each and every one of us can follow those, I believe the sooner that we'll get past this tragedy or this, this health crisis. Um, we'll get out of it and get through it. As the mayor said, um, through partnership, we appreciate your understanding and your cooperation. And when it's all said and done, I believe we're going to be a stronger community for it. At this time, I, I know that uh, we did mention that we were going to have a, be able to answer some questions. Um, those questions could be submitted to um, my email, and that is citymanager at bedfordoh.gov. Uh, we do have one question that came over a short while ago. Uh, that question is from Jim. Slifka, I apologize, Jim, if I, if I pronounced that wrong. Uh, Jim is 130 Grand Boulevard. Uh, the question came up regarding uh, truck carriers, um, semi-trucks traveling down Grand Boulevard, 
unloading vehicles, um, specifically the part on Lower Grand. Um, Jim, it, this uh, similar question came up a few weeks ago. Um, actually, I just recently spoke to Councilwoman Spinks about that this afternoon. Um, we were monitoring it. It seems obviously that it is not improving, um, but we will try to have a conversation with some of the dealerships, uh, specifically the dealership that I believe is responsible for um, this uh, cut through. Um, for the most part, um, sometimes they try to unload at the very end of Grand just to avoid blocking the traffic in Broadway. Um, but I can tell you that you know they're not permitted to use Grand Boulevard as a cut through, meaning um, traveling from Broadway using Grand all the way over to Center. Um, that's typically not been permitted, and we'll we'll try to work with that dealership. Um, or dealerships that may be responsible for that, and hopefully we can get that addressed soon. That is the only uh, question that has come up um, on, on uh, the email. Um, again, uh, with that being said, we're here if you need anything. Um, we're continuing to conduct uh, city business. It is a little different type of way we conduct business, but we're here. Um, you can contact each and any one of us via email, via the phone, um, and we will be there to address whatever concerns, questions, or needs you may have. Again, uh, I implore you to continue to follow that order. Follow us for updates via social media, website, and constant contact. And most importantly, I hope each and every one of you and your families continue to stay safe and continue to stay healthy. Thank you. I would also like to thank uh, Mr. Jim Wagner, who is our uh, video technologist. He is safe in another room away from us. So it's all, only the three of us in this whole building. Uh, like Buck Stutt said before, it's kind of strange talking to an empty house. But uh, it's what we have to do now and, and what we will do to keep people safe. And again, this is a serious, serious business. I know it has affected some people that are close to my wife and I, and uh, it's for real. Right? I still see some people gathering that shouldn't, or but but if you need to, if you have an elderly, check on them. Uh, if you have an elderly play, a parent or a, a person that has some special needs, please by all means help them out, but be as do it as safely as possible, and. Uh, yeah, Mike. Sorry about that, Mayor. I, I have one other item that I uh, forgot to mention, and it, it came out um, over the weekend. Um, we were notified by Kimball, our refuse um, service provider. And uh, if you go on our city website, as well as those uh, social media platforms that I mentioned, um, we put out some information um, from Kimball, and Kimball will also be trying to communicate with each and every one of you um, if they have your email on file, um, but they also have a letter that is on their website and social media platforms. And that, le that letter indicates some significant changes to the service that they're providing. That, those changes are not going to go into effect this week. The changes are going to begin next week. What those changes include is, and I will read some of these, uh, effective April 13th, which is next week, um, to protect, to protect uh, their workers and obviously to avoid any service dis disruptions, they're asking to and going to be implementing the following changes. In regards to solid waste, um, all materials must be in the Kimball provided waste cart and you cannot leave any materials on the ground that need to be loaded by hand. They will not collect that, and it will not be permitted to sit on your tree lawn for weeks at a time. So again, if you can't get that trash in the cans, you're going to need to hold off and wait to put the, that out the following week. Um, there's going to be recycling. Um, all the recycled materials must be able to be fit inside the Kimball provided recycle cart. Um, they are temporarily holding bulk items that require hand loading. If you have large items, um, an appliance or whatever that may be, 
please refrain from putting that out. Um, and there's also some information on yard waste. So if you have any questions, if you did not see the information we posted earlier today, and if you did not receive an email from Kimball, please look at that on our website. Please check our social media um, outlets. You can get the specifics on that. And that, again, does not take place this week, but it will start the following week. So um, please reference the, the Kimball notice as there will be some changes taking place. Thank you. And with that... Uh we're going to wrap up, and uh, thank you for listening, and uh, I hope this has been informative. And again, I want to re reiterate how much uh, work that our city has been doing for the, the citizens and the, the employees. And I'm, I'm so proud of our team up here that uh, they're just way ahead of the curve on getting things done. And I want all of you to be safe. Uh, have an enjoyable Easter, even though we're going to be confined to our homes. Uh, it's going to be tough, um, but we'll make the best of it. And it, please keep safe, keep your distance, and most of all, wash your hands. It's more important than you can believe. So with that, I just want to say good night and thank you for listening.